And welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at the FU-1C. And yes, to that guy in my comment section, you can finally shut up now. But in all seriousness, we just reached 60,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So I thought, why not celebrate this somewhat to answer, well, while answering one of the more asked questions. How do I deal with stock performance or bad airplanes in general? And I want to make this a four-parter. One is going to be this one with props. I want to cover one where we do early jets, so like 7.0 until 9.3-ish. And on one at top tier where flares and missiles become increasingly important. And it does change the dynamic of the game a little bit. So I want to do those three. And then I also want to cover one where we fly bad vehicles. And I'm going to keep it very short. In general, there is no real way to fly them. But there are some tips and there are some things that can, that can help your, your progress. So to speak. I'm not going to be looking at the easiest way to grind it. Because that's simply just kill as much stuff. Try to maximize your RP. And if you have a decent airframe like in the FU-1C. More of that in a second. You can actually get some fighter kills. Maybe kill some bombers and stuff like that. But at the end of the match. If you're noticing that it's going a little bit south. Or you're noticing that you're winning. And not really impacting the ground. Just go and ground pound. I know me telling you to ground pound. Sounds like a bit of a joke. But I'm serious, you just want to get as much RP as quickly in as possible. In props, not that much of an issue. You can mostly spade a lot of the props in like 10 games. Even if you aren't doing that well, by just killing as much as you can. Even sending it in a head-on, just playing very aggressively. And in general, being stock is a very nice way to learn your plane. Don't play it too passively. You don't really have the advantages that you would have won once you're spaded. Take some risk. Just try to get as many kills as quickly as possible. That's going to speed up your progress by quite a bit. So, why the FU-1C? Well, the FU-1C is basically a stock plane. Sure, it has the upgraded cannons. But this thing has the exact same engine as something like the FU-1A. And you might say, well, the FU-1A is criminally criminally under tiered and you are exactly right. The issue is this thing is also over tiered. So you are basically flying around with a stock engine. So the issues that you have with a stock plane, bad climb, bad acceleration and just very poor sustained fighting capabilities because you don't have the energy generation that you actually need is going to make you play around these issues. But the airframe of the FU-1C is actually still pretty decent. So you, so you do have some advantages here. You can dive very quick, you pull quite well at high speed and your roll is still pretty decent. The flaps are good, the only issue is your speed is limited. And you might say, how do I go around this? Is there a real way? Yes, there is. It's by using altitude to dive. And diving, going downwards, is going to make your engine much less important. But we'll show you a novel that in a second. Before we get started today, thank you to all the patrons and everyone looking to buy anything from the guys in store. We have a decal. I'll actually plaster it on right now because why the hell not? And if you buy anything there, you get a 3% discount as well as the fact that that you get this absolutely fantastic thing on your tail or wherever you want to put it. And I want to take one quick look at some other things here. And that is stock grinding. And I want to make a separate video on this where we go a little bit more in depth. But in general, you want to prioritize two things. You want to rush the engine mods. And this goes especially for props. Radiator is very good because if you can't web, you're going to lose a lot of your performance. And with the radiator, you are going to be able to, well, you guessed it. Have a higher throttle for a higher duration through the game. And very often the belts are also a good pick. For example for German planes. Where the stock MG 151s are absolute dog trash. You might want to look at some weaponry as well. Because you can have all the performance in the world. If your guns won't kill anyone. They need to take two or three. Sometimes even four passes to shoot someone down. It's just effectively the same thing as having super bad aim. And with super bad aim. You're not going to get that far. So if you're going to look at something like. Say the A5U2. First thing here, almost second thing, is going to be the 20 mil. So I would go for the radiator if you only need two things. You might want to go for the fuselage if you need it. Otherwise, go for the compressor or for the 20 millimeters. I would almost say get the 20 millimeters before you get the compressor. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how well you can perform if you don't have the cannons. It's all relative. If you have a good plane, you're not going to need... More performance. And if you have good guns. Like say with the Yaks. Where the Shivax stock are actually pretty damn good. Same with the A&M2s. Colts. And quite a bit of guns actually. But something like Japanese 20mm. These 20mm. The one for Germany. 
Italy is the same, same deal. 50 cals, kind of the same deal. Depends on the tier however. So default ones are kind of okay still. But looking at say also the FU1A. These are pretty shit. I would run ground belts actually. But these belts are pretty bad. And these are the first one you can unlock. So I would go with this first. Then the radiator. This thing is under tiered. It has the performance. But it depends a little bit on the vehicle you're playing. And I want to go a little bit more in depth into that. On an actual different video. Where I actually take a closer look. To what you need to get. Because it changes for every plane. And I want to give you some guidelines. But let's get actual gameplay in now. So I'll see you in a second. So here we are, and with the FU-1C, like a lot of the other stock vehicles, you still have a decent airframe, which you actually have some advantages in. This is of course going to be some experience again, and you need to get a little bit lucky. And at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot of luck, positioning, and simply picking the right targets. I like taking min fuel, because you need all the performance you are going to get. And mostly you're not going to survive that long anyway, unless you're flying something that's actually a clubber. Say something like the CW21, the P29N is not that much of an issue. A lot of the planes you can deal with, but it's mostly the ones that are already super strong once they're spaded. So something like the Yak3U, that thing's stock is still amazing. Most of the Yaks stock are still pretty decent, because the airframe is good. The engine is not the only good thing about it. If you have a plane with a very shit airframe that completely relies on the engine, well let me tell you, you're fucked. There, <laughs> there is no real way around it. You are completely boned and you just need to play as suicidal as possible. And when I say take risk, send it for head-ons, I don't mean just get yourself killed. I mean, if you need to go head-on with someone and you know you don't have the performance advantage, if you go past the head-on, just, just, just send it. Try to kill him right then and there. Because if you are going to try to fight sustained, you're going to have a problem. Because you don't have the performance for it. You don't have the engine mods. And if you don't have the engine mods, you don't want to fight sustained. Unless you have a plane that's stupidly quick. Most of the time, that's not the case. So, we killed some guys in the background. And this is not the real gameplay I wanted to really talk about. It's the one after this. Or the ones after this. Because I got quite a few games for you today. And here we have someone on a 6. And you can tell I'm just trying to keep it fast by going down. To roll out of his guns. And the things I'm doing right here aren't really impacted by my stock performance. Because I roll and pull better than this guy regardless. It doesn't really matter what engine is in this thing. In the maneuvers I'm doing, it doesn't really matter what engine is in it. Of course, once you start diving after people, once you start trying to catch people and, st and stuff like that, sure. But you're not doing that in these kind of fights. So I try to just work my way down as much as possible. You don't have a good time rate. You don't have a competitive health advantage at the start. And that's going to be your main deficit. You won't be able to actually dive on people. So people are going to be diving on you. Which is kind of helpful because you want to keep it fast anyway. And you want to keep it fast by not using your engine power. And just use the altitude that ironically you got from your lack of engine power. So we turned in. I notice he isn't turning around. I know I don't need to turn around right now and engage the guy on my ass. I notice this guy diving on us from above. And I'm just going to kind of roll around him. And see if I can maybe try to get some shots in. He does hit that somehow. That's some bad desync. And I'm just going to roll around him. I know that the 109 doesn't roll particularly well. And I'm going to try to somewhat dance around him. Because if I don't get this guy killed. At least I'll get him to burn all of his altitude. Right now. But kind of okay. I'm just rolling around. He hits us with an MG round. And guess what? Orange engine. And at this point. It's not just a stock plane. It's the stock plane on 20% throttle. And what do we do? We go into a reversal setting where the engine power again doesn't matter. And I'm even throttling down right here. Do I need to? Probably not. Why? Because I'm already... I don't have any performance left in this engine. And I'm just trying to make this guy overshoot. How do you do this? Is there a real way to explain that? Sure, I have a defensive flying guide. Which might explain this a little bit more in depth. But in general, I go into a sizzle. My engine performance doesn't matter that much anymore. And it becomes about turn radius. And going slower than so on. Especially if you have good flaps. Actually helps you in that case. This guy completely threw the game. By actually getting stuck. Inset uh, scissors. Because he should have just gone vertical. And he would have killed me in a singular loop. But a lot of guys are not aware of performance. Or relative performance in these vehicles. And it's the same with something like the LA7. The LA7 runs absolute circles around us. And he's actually pretty scary. So I'm just trying to make this guy fast. He might rip or might overspeed. But I'm also trying to keep him somewhat close. So that he doesn't break off. I'm trying to make this guy compress. 
by getting some speed into him. And I'm just trying to waste his time as much as possible. And then he breaks off for a single second. We jump on that opportunity. And we dick him right out of the air. Like he's on the orange and black YouTube. Now we have an ITP directly above us. And this is actually the same game. A little bit later. And I want to bait this guy in diving on us. Why? The ITP sure has a higher energy state. But he also doesn't turn that well. And he does compress quite a bit. Sure he has a better climb rate. He will have a better sustained fight. But if you have enough energy in your plane, very often you will get a shot before your energy runs out. And if you're both going 600 and one of them breaks off like this, you're still going to get within gun range. The ITP locked up. He took quite long to turn around and he gave us a lot of room to turn into him. So we just start shooting at him. And even though I just hit him twice, you can tell that I don't have the energy to pull for him. This guy is probably... This is one of those people, and I'm not saying this guy did it. He did not do it. But this is the, one of those scenarios where people say he pulled energy out of his ass. However, I'm below him. I'm not really gaining on him. And this guy is heavily crit. Like he is falling out of the air because of his crit. He's losing a lot of lift and he's kind of drooping his wings. But you can tell he has more energy. He's higher than me. I'm having trouble trying to keep my nose on him. So I dip my nose a little bit. Drop the flaps for a slight moment to boost my turn rate. And we also click him right out of the air. Are these things foolproof? Of course not. And a game like this will showcase a vehicle like this a lot better. And this is not so much about the stock performance. But just how you fly planes with mediocre performance in general. It doesn't really matter if it's stock or not. That's irrelevant. What are your advantages at the end of the day? This thing is pretty quick. Funnily enough it's actually still slower than the fu one a And that's because of the extra drag and weight of the cannons. But it's still pretty quick. It's still fast enough to deal with a lot of stuff. The issue is you don't have the acceleration or the climb rate. So very often you'll find people diving on you. Which is of course what you don't really want to happen. But with a plane like this if someone dives on you. That means you're going to force a high speed fight. Which actually favors you somewhat. You do want to be careful because if he starts playing a vertical game. You simply die. But if you can lure them into these downward spirals. Into these scissors. Into these high speed knife fights. You can actually get on top. As long as it doesn't go too sustained. And a Yak 3 that's on a 6 right now. Is a problem. What do I want to do? I kind of wanted to get him a little bit further from the pack. So I could safely head on him. If I miss him. I can go for his teammates on the deck. And he will not be catching us. In a straight line. I should be able to be completely clear. But he breaks off and he goes for my team below us. And we do have one BF109 right above us as well here. Who is going to engage us any second now. And again we're going to try to keep it fast. And we're going to try to keep him fast most importantly. And yes if you're flying a plane with bad performance. Your aim and your cannons are going to be important. Because you're probably going to get one or two shots. If you whiff them you're done. So BF109 dives on us. I'm trying to keep it fast. We're going 650. Which is well above his top speed. Now he can stick this. But he's going to compress. He's going to have issues rolling. And because we're both going pretty quick. But I'm close to my top speed. And he is. By the time his actual engine power starts kicking in. It's too late. He's only 800 meters away. I'm just going to hold the trigger down. And down goes the BF109. And you can tell. He has a big energy advantage on us. His en engine was about to kick in. His vertical advantage was about to kick in but it doesn't matter and why is that because my guns don't really care about energy as long as you are within range nice one vb10 and i can put my nose on target if i can put my nose on target within like 800 or 700 meters and you're going 200 it's effectively the same thing as diving on someone as long as you have the nose authority and that's the most annoying part because if you're flying a stock vehicle very often you don't have the nose authority because you don't have the engine performance at lower speeds. Yak3 is pitching up for us. But we have enough altitude. He's climbing for us. Which means he has to go up. I can go down. It also negates our engine performance loss. Or the lack of a good engine. Right now he's directly below us. We're going to fly over the 190. I'm not going to take the fight with the Yak3 just yet. And we're going to do the exact same thing to this dude. We're going to make him pull up for us. The issue is there's also an LA-7 around in the area. But do I want to dive on this guy? Yes I do. He is presenting himself quite nicely. 
And because I'm able to pull in behind him, because he literally stalled himself out, it's always nice to keep the numbers down. Sustained fights are bad when you stalk. Another thing is also very bad once you stalk, and that's fighting multiple opponents, because then your lack of an engine is going to really shine through. If you have to switch targets, if you cannot commit to a single line or to a single enemy, you're really going to struggle. The VB-10 head on to the Act-3, which is actually pretty damn helpful. And he then gets gunned down by the LA-7. At least I think he does. At least it looks that way. I'm going to try to keep this guy alive, because that's a real lifeline. Trying to keep your team alive and trying to make sure that you actually have some support. So if you have to break off, a teammate might actually help you out. We dive on the LA-7. We are going his rip speed, and he came out of a 180 after going for someone. So he's going a lot slower. I start wrapping a little bit later here because at 600 kilometers an hour the web doesn't really do much. And we just have too much energy. And again, it doesn't really matter what engine he has if I have too much energy banked in my plane. And just like that, we get a shot. Does he have a better plane? Definitely. If you're going 200 to 300 kilometers an hour quicker, it doesn't really matter what engine is in there. And of course, if I miss that shot, I might get another one. If I miss that shot and the one after, because he actually keeps his speed, if he's playing it smart and they try to keep their energy and are not throwing it away, yes, it's going to suck. And here we have a Yak-9, which also has better dogfighting capabilities than we do. And for now, I'm just climbing. I don't want to go fast, I just want to climb. And then I start leveling out, I want to pick up some speed, make it so that I have some speed banked in my plane before we start engaging him. Why is this important? Because we don't want him to dive out. We don't want him to equalize. And we don't want this to go to sustain. So by going straight a little bit. It looks like we're a lot closer. It looks like our energy state is lower. And if it then pitches up for us. We can simply do a little bit of a turn. And this is risky. The Yak 9P does turn quite a bit better than us. All I need to do now is turn well enough. To stay out of his guns. I don't use my flaps because I don't need them. Until the, well, the stalling part. I then drop the flaps. And because he stuck to us, because he pitched up for us, and we had energy banked in, we are now very closely latched on to this guy 6. You can tell I'm not following his turn instantly. I'm waiting a little bit, and I'm trying to maintain as much position as possible. I'm not whapping. I'm somewhat cooling down the engine. And then he goes vertical, and he gives us a very nice broadside shot. We take his entire plane apart. He turns into a frisbee. And we're just going to wait until he falls onto a tree. And maybe start smoking it. He recovers with one wing and a flash plane just yak things. Luckily it's a yak 9P. Which is probably the worst yak for its BR. And no, I don't care what your KD is in it. It is still the worst yak in the entire game probably. Or at least among the top 3 worst. So, are you trying to see a trend yet? If people are above you, make them dive. If anything, at least is going to make your team... Your team is going to be grateful that you pull that plane a little bit low. Of course, don't dive straight to the deck, 90 degrees, because then your team can't actually help you. Try to keep them fast, try to waste as much energy as possible, but don't go 90 degrees down. Right now, I'm trying to keep the Spitfire quick. He's going to compress quite a bit, and I'm actually going to try to send it for one or two turns. It's a Mark 9, so he doesn't turn ridiculously well, something like a Mark 5. I'm trying to get the guns on here, not going to get it, and... I lure this guy into a fight. I'm just going to stick it. Why? Because if he tries to go for me. Guess what? He's going to stall his ass out in front of four of my teammates. The B-49er below us. And tries to pitch up and shoots us down. Not going to happen. We just pull out of his guns. Use the flaps a little bit. Ride him. Try to get energy. And he is also going way too slow now. All we need to do is try to get the shot in. And I do that by using my flaps. Pull into him as quickly as we can. And we also shoot him out of the air. We almost ran a zero as well. But hey, it didn't happen. So all is well. What do we want to do next? There's plenty of teammates around. So I'm going to look at the guys on the deck. Why? Because I'm looking for quick resource points. I'm just trying to get as many as quickly as possible. 109 coming in. We're just going to head on him. Now this is not really going to happen very often if you're flying a stock plane. He gets dicked. But at the same time, we have so many teammates around that even if I hadn't killed him... It really wouldn't have mattered. If you're flying a plane with A&M2s. They are going to be very shotgunny when they stalk. Which is extremely annoying. But. 
it's workable because at least at close range they actually do some damage. The only issue is you can't really snipe and you can't really shoot sustained burst at all. So you're gonna be kind of reliant on your aim a little bit. At the same time, they're so inaccurate when they're stalk. That your bad aim doesn't really matter because even if you put the crosshair exactly where it needs to be, the rounds are not gonna go there anyway. P63, he is above us and he does win the dogfight. But he needs to play it right. And the issue with the P63 is it's also very bad sustained at like lower airspeeds because the prop efficiency of that thing is pretty bad. The French one does have slightly better characteristics than the American one, and that's mainly because of an oversight on the deaths. They changed the American one and forgot that one. But we'll just have to do with it. And here comes the advantage of the airframe. Even though I have a shit, shit engine. I can dive pretty quick. And this thing will top out at about 580 kilometers an hour. So right now I'm just trying to run away from both of these guys. And I will be able to. And I'm mainly just waiting until one of them breaks off. Or one of them gets killed by the A6M. Why? Again, I have very poor energy generation climb rate acceleration that good stuff so 2v1 is not exactly fun but we have a guy on the six so i'm gonna go and try to reverse him for one good reason i want to show you what it's like to fly a stock plane that actually gets caught as well because the only advantage of this thing is that it's pretty fast in most of your stock vehicles you will not be fast so i'm just waiting for the c205 so i can show you how to dogfight this guy I'm gonna turn in prematurely. We're not gonna go for the heddle. We're just gonna make sure that we get the best second turn. He's going for the shot. He rolls the wrong way. We go underneath him. And we instantly get a little bit of position. I don't want to go too vertical. But I also want to abuse the fact that the P63 has pretty shit low speed characteristics. We have a lot of position here. And we can use the fact that we are in this position. Because we abuse the first turn. To stall right on top of him. There we go. We get a shot, we crit him, and now what we need to do is simply stay out of his gun, because he's going to get a counter-attack right here, and that's what I meant, if you miss someone, you're going to have an issue, because he very easily could have pulled into the right there, if he hadn't actually crippled him before that turn. And that's why it's so important, and that's why it's so annoying if your guns don't work. The C205 actually shoots down the A6M in the background, and we're going to do the exact same thing, and the C205 again is a plane that doesn't turn necessarily well, but has a pretty strong engine. That plane is basically the opposite of what we have. And the stock grind in planes like that is much more excruciating. Because having a plane that relies solely on its engine without an engine, let me tell you, absolutely sucks balls to fly. So the C205 is on our 6. I can outrun this guy and I can run from him all day long. But I also know that at high speed I can very easily reverse him. And that's going to speed this up a little bit. And of course for the sake of not being able to outrun them. We go under him. He goes vertical. And just like that we're instantly on his 6. We crit him. I mean that was a horrible play from him. But hey. I'll take it. And that's why using the ground terrain. And the fact that you're very fast. Helps. And when he breaks off we're going to be able to whip around much quicker than him. Because we compress a hell of a lot less. And if he did commit for the shot. He would have had to break off. Either take a swim. Or he breaks off and gives us a lot of position. Either option, well, it works out quite well for us. So we're going to go head on with a beer for the 9 here. Nothing that interesting. Don't get a hit. And we're simply going to go up and over. Do we want to go sustained with this guy? No, not really. It's a beer for the 9 G2. And he will win this fight quite handily if we go vertical. However, we are going to go downwards. And again, our energy doesn't matter. Our engine doesn't matter. As long as we don't go actual well, vertical in the up fashion. He flies in front of us. I simply miss it. That is my problem. That is my problem. I'm having a massive skill issue. That's the main issue here. We get two shots. We miss them both. Here, I mean we get a shot. I'm just having an absolute stroke of a game. And my aim this match is absolutely terrible. And this is why it sucks. It's the same deal as having bad guns. Why? Because for the sake of having bad guns. I could have hit him two or three times there. But it wouldn't have mattered. Because I probably would have gotten three hits. And with a and M2s. Not really that much of an issue. But with a lot of other planes. It will be. 
trying to pressure the 109 again. The B25, however, is going for fighter, so I just want to get a crit in or a kill. It doesn't really matter. I just want him crippled. I just want him to be useless. And he will be exactly that. Can we run away now? Not really. Look at our acceleration. It is not very good. We're maintaining 430 while climbing at a very shallow angle. But at 4.7, something like an LA7 would, would laugh at this all day long. There's a J2M coming in and he has a lot of altitude and he's going to outturn us quite handily. So what do I want to do? I just want to kill this 109 as quickly as possible. It doesn't actually go for us, so we are going to be pitching up underneath him. He dies. Which is fine. But then, the J2M decides to go for the lowest and the slowest. Why is that so funny? Because I'm the worst person he could go for right now. If he had go, gone for the A21, would have had a pretty easy time. We almost pull in here. Don't manage to do it. Just short a little bit. Typhoon coming in. And this is what happens when a J2M2 that just only focuses on you goes for you. Why he goes for me, I have no idea. Is it because of my name? Is it because of my squadron? Is it because I'm playing a horrible plane and he sees a free kill? I don't know. But this guy is throwing the match. And he's so busy trying to focus me that he forgets everyone around him. A21 on his 6. B49 is now catching him. Why? I have no clue. We're just going to go underneath him. And I just want to try and dogfight him. I'm not going to be winning this. But I will be a significant distraction. And he's so busy trying to kill me that I know exactly what he's going to do. And you can tell. This guy is going to kill me. No issue. He's flying it horribly. And I probably would have gotten the kill right there. But it doesn't matter. Because he gets killed by someone else. Hope this was helpful. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. Which will be covering the J34.